Raven. Hey, who's a good dog? <laughs> Welcome back, guys, to the RC Spark Studio, where I continue to work on my Project Overkill one tenth scale trail truck that I'm uh, building uh, for the 2020 Rude Boys RC TTC, which is a tough truck competition. Now, a purpose-based rig, a lot of people have asked me, when will I put the decals on the, uh, the body here itself? And, and I would say that that would be a finishing touch. But when we last left off, I had just installed the Reefs RC servo winch, and I mounted it up. Thank you to the folks that gave me this for the suggestion to take a slightly larger drill bit and drill out that hole so it's not as sharp on the cable. And you'll see that I actually chose a, dr a drill bit that fits that collar perfectly. I actually used a collar and grub screw to answer another viewer's question on how I attached that hook. So there is that. Also, my friends, let's see here. Everyone was giving me a good warning, and thank you for that, about against using a grinding wheel for aluminum. And they all thought when I said I had ground off that much of the Reefs RC mount, but actually I had used a, a hacksaw, cut off a good portion of it, and then just used a small amount of grinding to just kind of smooth everything out before I mounted it inside this GCM frame. Now, if you're just catching up with us, this is part eight of this extensive build uh, that I undertook several weeks ago here on YouTube and there is a lot to look at and this is a tribute to the original Project Overkill, the GMC top kick I built about 12 years ago, well not 12 years ago, eight years ago, pardon me. Uh, and so here we are with a whole revamped version. A lot of people ask me, am I doing dualies on this? And no, a lot of GMC top kicks actually came with just four wheels. I did do the upgrade to portal axles, of course, and I could put dualies on here at any point in time. It's just for the original build that I want for the Tough Truck competition, which is what I'm focused on right now, although it's in July and it is March right now, um, this is really what I'm looking at. But what and why are we here today? Well, being Project Overkill, and the original Overkill was all about the technology I had at the time. And, you know, the, the type of overkill uh, truck that I wanted to build, which was gonna have two batteries, and it was gonna have two motors, and two, trans like it had a single transmission, but it was mounted up onto one spur gear, those, both of those motors. It was a great series, and I had a lot of fun with that truck. And one of the things that I thought that was always gonna be amazing, of course, and I mentioned it in the very first or second video, was the suspension. Now, in the original Project Overkill, the suspension was quite different. If we look over here in my parts bin, here you can see I'm a little discombob discombobulated. Here's the old MSR10 shocks from Intigy that I used to run on Project Overkill. For anybody that remembers, if you remember the original Project Overkill, please make a comment right now letting me know that you've seen it, because I want to know how many people have seen the original. Uh, and so I thought with those monster shocks, well now we've got these des uh, desert lizard shocks that I brought in from Yao Racing. And you'll also remember if you've been following along with the build that I said I wanted to do the dual shock setup. And this is why I bought these specific hangers for a different vehicle altogether because it's got multiple mounting areas. Well, let's see. Let's take this tire off and show you what's behind. Here is the uh, Vanquish uh, licensed, cur like Curry licensed um, F9 portal axles. And you'll see that there really is only one area to hook up a link. Now, I remember saying that there was two areas on the back. Of course not. This is where the lower suspension link goes. Uh, and what I meant was I wanted to hook up duals here, but I had to figure out a way to do that. Now, and so I figured to myself what I could do is actually remove this rod from the rod end where it screws into the eyelet. And then I would have a eyelet that was just open, like this one, for example, right? Still screwed into one spot. But if I made a top plate that was flat and went across the top right here, that had one screw in the middle that I could screw down into this eyelet, and then 
screw this rod end into a plate and this rod end on this side into a plate for the second shock in one plate with three holes, I will have done it. Yes, it is amazing, my friends. I am always a student, never a master, that's for sure. I had no idea that you couldn't grind aluminum on a grinding wheel like the way I have it. In fact, it could be incredibly dangerous and cause the uh, wheel to explode. So thank you. I always do read the comments. Um, you'll notice that my five mil piece of steel is totally square. And what I'm going to do is draw a few lines here, about a half an inch in um, depth or in width. Uh, and then, of course, basically straight across. Because what I'm going to need to do is make four little mounting brackets. And I'll show you what I mean. Not bad. I'm going to be cutting on the inside. Now, what I want to do is take my two um, screws two shocks. I want to make sure to take the eyelet off of one and then taking the eyelet off the second one. And what I want to do is line these up on the steel and I could make a mark on the steel itself but I also before I make a mark down here at the end of the rod and here, I also want to make sure that the top of the um, shocks are going to line up on the mount itself. Let me show you what I mean. Let's get into the mount. And so how close, here let me refocus, how close can that be? Like right there, I want to make sure that they all line up because once it's in the steel, it's not going to be moving around a whole bunch. I'm going to want to make sure I've got a nice straight line for where I'm going to be drilling. So basically straight across. I can still see the bottom of the dots, no problem. And I'm going to make the outside punch first. There's one. And then the inside or the other outside. Now between these two I want to measure to know where that center point is going to be. Okay, they didn't turn out the way I liked, so instead, come on, focus, I'm going to do these three because I like these a lot better. I'll fire up the drill press here, but I want to make sure everything's lined up with the laser. Face mask and eye protection required. RC Sparks! <laughs> Alrighty folks, if you've never seen one of these, this might be new to you, uh, obviously, so I'll explain what you're looking at. This is a tap and die set. Um, basically what it is for is making threads uh, for screws or making the screws themselves. Like if you had a piece of rod end and you needed to make a, a, a screw uh, and that the screw was like a half inch, you would use one of these and turn it down that rod to make the actual screw. Well, if you actually want to make a female uh, part, like something that you put threads into, for example, what we're doing with the piece of steel, the M3 uh, 0 0.5, you'll see that this is a tap. Now it's a, a tapered tap, and I'm going to show you how to use this. This is the tool that comes with it, and you'll see that it's kind of a vise, and it vises in the middle. This goes in the middle and it's kind of like a, a, a square or if you turn it on its side, a diamond head. And it kind of just goes in like that. What we're going to be doing is putting thread into that piece of steel so I can take the rod end of the shock and actually thread it right through this piece of steel, which will help add to the strength of Project Overkill 2020. Okay, so here you are super close to the piece of steel.
Uh, in fact, you're in a vise right now. Check this out. You want to make sure to have this piece of steel as flat as possible. I can see it's out even a little bit here. I'm probably going to make an adjustment right now because you want this to be super level. If you're putting threads into something that isn't perfectly level, well then you're going to get a th uh, an angled thread, which is no good to anybody because then all of your screws are going to go in on the, a bad angle. So here it is, tight into the vise, and what I want to do is take that tapered edge. You could use some oil here, but I'm going through such a small area, it really doesn't matter. And I want to put it just like that, and we'll, we'll zoom back so you can kind of see what's going on here. Now I'm going to add some downward pressure, and I want to make sure to remain as straight as possible. So I'm just going to kind of feel my way down there. And as I turn it, what it's doing is actually cutting thread, and I'm not pushing too hard. And there, I can feel the thread has been made, and that is how you can do that. So now any M3.5 uh, uh, screw is going to fit into here. So what I want to do is do all three holes. Just going to draw a few straight lines here so I know exactly where I'm cutting. Because I'm going to be using a cutting wheel next to cut this out. So I'm using a Dremel rotary tool with a cutting disc. And I'm just going to score the outside because then I know where I'm going. There it is. I'll let that cool off for a moment. So now I'm left with this small rectangle with three threaded holes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grind the edges just so that they're not uh, sharp at all and kind of round out the corners just so it's more appealing. Okay, so then I'm left with this little piece. Now I'm no master craftsman, craftsman, I can't even say the word there. There it is though, this is something simple. I'm going to make four of these. Now technically, if I did this right, this M3.5 mil should thread into this hole with no problem. And indeed it does, ta-da! That is how you do that, my friends. Now. Is it going to fit one of the shock shafts? That's a good idea. Let's check that out. Here's the threaded end. And excelente. So I'll remove the shock from the tower. And so what I'm thinking about is the suspension setup. I'm sure everybody right now is thinking dual shocks is going to be way too stiff for a trail truck because all of the conventional methods that we've seen so far have made it that way. And I would agree with you, that was a challenge I was worried about as well. But I was thinking to myself, which I often do, <laughs> self, uh, the suspension itself, I would want to have the sprung shock towards the center of the machine, while the unsprung shock, which would be basically in droop only with oil in it, which means one will have a spring, which has a nice bounce back, and one would not. It would just have oil in there, and it would have no spring. One with no spring on the outside would be ideal because then the one that was sprung could basically take the whole suspension. And the way it's set up on the actual perch itself is spreading the weight. So I want to show you what I mean, but only after we get this set up. So now that I have this off, what I want to do is go ahead and remove the eyelet or the rod end itself from the end. This is the uh, shock I just got out of the box, so nothing has changed. And what I'm going to do is just open it up. There's no oil in it from, from the factory. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that spring right there and place a small amount of oil in this chamber just to act as a lubricant. Then I'm going to place this back. And this one is basically going to be not a fake shock, it's adding strength to your whole axle. If you're going to take a tumble down the axle, uh, or a <laughs> tumble down the axle, tumble down the hill, uh, then, you know, 
you're going to be worried about breaking one of your eyelets off. Now this is going to give you double that strength. Perfect. So it just collapses, it moves freely, and of course right at the end it has that small internal spring which will help it come back, but basically that's how it's going to sit. So this is going to get screwed directly into the plate. that if I get two small um, nylon nuts on the bottom there because then I could have simply have just drilled a hole through and then done the nut but I think this is actually going to add uh, more strength to it overall all right so Lift the frame up out of the way, get that screw into place so we can hold it in there. And then the sprung one towards the center. So after all is said and done, I find that having one that is sprung and just down a little bit from the one that is unsprung seems to be the most beneficial way to do it. And look in the background, guys. You can see I already have the other side done and I've left that steel piece unpainted. Why would I have gone unpainted? Well, it's going to naturally rust. And I think for all the scale trail freaks that are out there, they love the scale details so why not have an actual bit of rusty truck on there right it's not going to hurt anything where it's at here it is on the front same kind of idea the springs are on the inside but I also did do the outside now that's just for my own preference because I am running a three cell 5000 milliamp hard case pretty heavy lipo battery plus I also have got my winch servo back here I don't want this to be a wimpy loose front end. I did explain in the last video how I like my suspension. I like having flex in the front and you can see that there is quite a bit of suspension flex in the front but also when I'm going over a hole I don't want my front end to fall into the hole and cause my whole truck to roll into that hole. I like to be able to drive on one side and float my front over the uh, over that gap. Now but look in the back completely different. Here it is on the staggered suspension and look at this because I'm going basically only sprung with one of the light springs in the back all of those shocks are working a lot of you guys would have thought this was going to work like shit but no 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 this is project overkill 2020 my friends I knew that uh, I wanted to make sure to have a supremely tough truck uh, to be able to go out to the competition this year. I hope you've enjoyed the project so far. It's been an absolute blast to build with you guys on YouTube. And hopefully you guys have already smashed the like button because that's what it's all about. You know on YouTube that helps. Maybe even a comment to what you think about Project Overkill 2020. And until next time for a new modification, we will see you in the next RC adventure. Now get outside and have fun with RC or if you're like me, stay inside and build yourself one. Bye.